Electric here. Today is Sunday, January 12th, 2025, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. The U.S. Department of Defense has recently added the world's leading electric vehicle battery supplier, CATL, to its list of companies linked to China's military. While this designation does not immediately ban CATL's business operations in the U.S., there is historic precedent that this maneuver can be a precursor to an outright ban. Electronics giants Huawei and ZTE are two examples of that. Drone and video production equipment manufacturer DJI was placed on the same list and has filed a lawsuit against the Pentagon for damages and will be fully banned from selling in the USA in one year if their legal efforts are unsuccessful. CATL sells power one-third of all electric vehicles on Earth. Tesla, Ford, Volkswagen, Nissan, Polestar, and many other automakers rely on CATL's battery supply. The company has publicly contested the military company label, calling it a mistake and stating that it has never engaged in military-related activities. The designation currently restricts CATL only from engaging in contracts with the U.S. Department of Defense. CATL has vowed to take legal action to address what it considers a false designation, aiming to protect its business interests and those of its shareholders. Protectionist policies which prohibit CATL from doing business in America will decrease competition, which drives prices upward. Higher prices will have a negative effect on EV adoption. Back in February of 2023, Ford announced a partnership to license CATL technology at a battery plant in Michigan, which was supposed to produce up to 35 gigawatt hours annually and supply up to 400,000 Ford EVs. That project was intended to produce cells by 2026, but was postponed during the negotiations with the United Auto Workers Union in September of 2023. The representatives responsible for the policy offensive against CATL aim to introduce enough uncertainty to deter buyers like Ford from moving ahead with supply agreements. A great deal of resources have been applied towards ensuring this story is amplified in order to sway public opinion about CATL. Do you think the allegations are true? If they were true, would it make any difference considering battery cells are not smart or connected devices? Americans buy gasoline, food, metal, and other materials from companies which also sell to military adversaries. I wonder where we draw the line. On to more battery news. Lucid Motors and Panasonic Energy have announced a partnership with a multi-year agreement to supply lithium-ion batteries for Lucid's upcoming models. The collaboration specifically targets the Lucid Gravity Grand Touring SUV. Lucid has projected an EPA-estimated range of up to 450 miles from a battery pack with about 40% lower energy capacity than primary competitors. This deal leverages Panasonic's latest generation, high-performance 2170 cylindrical lithium-ion battery cells, which have an energy density above 800 watt-hours per liter. The cells are currently produced in Japan, with expected future production at Panasonic's new production facility in Kansas. This week, Lucid also announced their delivery numbers for 2024. They've delivered 10,241 units, and this is a record figure for the brand. 2025 will be their first full year with two models for sale. This week at the Consumer Electronics Show, I was present as Honda unveiled their first two near-production prototype EVs in their Zero line. Deliveries are expected to begin in 2026. The brand did not reveal specifications, but instead focused on features and brand identity. The in-vehicle experience and autonomous driving systems will be powered by a new AI-driven operating system called Asimo OS. Compute will be delivered by semiconductor chips co-developed with fellow Japan-based Renesas. The hardware offers high performance and power efficiency to handle their centralized electrical architecture featuring one core ECU. Honda reiterated their commitment to a positive charging experience with a native NAX port and other charging initiatives like their investment in charging network IANA and software platform Chargescape, which should enable vehicle grid integration with virtual power plant capabilities. 
The flagship model, the Saloon, has the same wedge shape as the Concept I saw last year, minus the gullwing doors. The Saloon will be built at Honda's EV hub in Ohio in late 2026. The Zero Series SUV, formerly the Space Hub Concept, is set to enter production in early 2026. Honda says the vehicle will incorporate a steer-by-wire system, similar to what Tesla has built into the Cybertruck. What do you think of the design of these two zero-line EVs coming next year? Too bold? Not bold enough? I was also present for an unveiling by a different Honda EV brand at the Consumer Electronics Show this week. You may recall our previous reports about Sony Honda Mobility, a 50-50 joint venture between Sony and Honda. The brand showed off the production intent of Fila One on stage and leadership offered some new details. The One will have an all-wheel drive drivetrain with 482 horsepower. Its 91 kilowatt hour battery will deliver an estimated range of up to 300 miles and it will include a NAX port capable of 150 kilowatts DC fast charging and 11 kilowatts AC charging. Afila will also be built in Ohio at the EV hub. It seems to share Honda's zero series electrical and electronic architecture with one core ECU, but Afila's in-vehicle experience will be powered by Qualcomm instead of Renesas. There will be two trim levels to start called Origin with a starting price of $89,900 and Signature which will begin at $102,900. Both trims will include premium features like the Smart Entry automatic door opening, recognized through your phone's digital key and app, 40 sensors including 18 cameras, 1 LiDAR, 9 radars, and 12 ultrasonic both inside and outside the vehicle, a Level 2 Plus Advanced Driver Assistance System, a digital personal agent, exterior media bar, active noise cancellation, active rear spoiler, side camera monitoring system, 5G connectivity, a yoke steering wheel, a spatial sound and immersive entertainment system through a panoramic screen, and a hatch style lift gate with 27 cubic feet of cargo space. They will also include a three-year subscription for the Afila Intelligent Drive, Afila Personal Agent, and a selection of immersive entertainment content, theme sets for digital vehicle customization, and 5G data connectivity. Signature trims will have three exterior color options with a larger 20-inch wheel and two interior color choices. It will also include wireless charging pads, USB-C and HDMI ports in the front and rear passenger areas, and two 12.9-inch LED entertainment screens mounted to the back of the front seats for rear passengers. Afila will sell their vehicles directly through their own studio and delivery hubs, circumventing the traditional third-party dealership model. The first locations are opening in the second half of 2025 in Torrance and Fremont, California. Additional studios will open in Century City in February and Corte Madera in March. During the presentation, they announced a partnership with Crash Champions, which owns 650 collision and repair centers across 38 states. Crash Champions will provide their authorized repair and maintenance at select locations. At this time, reservations are open for California customers only, with a $200 refundable deposit. The Origin has an estimated delivery in 2027, whereas the Signature Trim will begin deliveries in mid-2026. Afila appears to be positioned as Honda's flagship luxury brand, upmarket from their Acura nameplate. Luxury features and materials, an AI assistant, and vast Sony entertainment ecosystem help to differentiate the product. This partnership between Honda and Sony highlights Japan's position as global leaders in the automotive, electronics, and entertainment industries. What are your thoughts on the Afila One? Two weeks ago, we reiterated our expectations that Tesla would announce a refreshed version of their Model Y soon. This week, Tesla China showed the product and started taking orders. We expect Giga Berlin and Giga Texas to begin production later this year. Notable updates include a front and rear fascia redesign with a priority on maximizing efficiency. The rear bumper and body panels appear to have been redesigned for improved repairability. The dimensions are nearly identical, but the length and ground clearance have increased slightly. There are five exterior paint options, including this new one called Glacier Blue. 
An additional front view camera enables a wider field of view for automatic assisted driving and advanced smart summon. The vehicle is expected to be much quieter and smoother thanks to a die cast rear underbody, which reduces the number of parts required from 70 to 1. Specially designed acoustic glass on the interior and the updated suspension, wheels, and tires should help too. Inside, the reclining front seats will now include ventilation and passengers will have access to a rear touchscreen like all the rest of the Tesla lineup. The liftgate can now open automatically on approach and the second row seats electronically stow. The launch edition is offered with long range all wheel drive and standard range rear wheel drive powertrains. Chinese deliveries begin in March. Will these 2025 changes be enough for the Tesla Model Y to hold the title of the world's best-selling car for a third consecutive year? Last week, we discovered a lot of electric mobility products at the Consumer Electronics Show. We will soon publish our coverage of the Xpeng Aero EV Toll, interviews with Zeker's design leaders, demonstrations of electric uphill skis from Switzerland, and much more. Be sure to subscribe to Misco Electric Industry, Misco Electric Ride Reviews, and this channel so that YouTube will show you those videos as soon as they're available. Well, that wraps up today's episode. Have a great week, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.